Somebody, some people ask me who's Dr. Gerhardt. Sometimes I wonder that. But there's a bunch of letters after my name. But probably the most important thing is the word doctor in Latin means teacher. And the, the way I learn best is by teaching. And if I really want to learn something, I write a book about it. And so uh, those are the first three. So is it really true that we lose our memory as we get older? Is it inevitable that we're going to develop memory problems? The most recent book, Living Free of Dementia, the subtitle is Solving the Puzzle, and that's a critical theme tonight. Solving the puzzle to prevent and reverse cognitive decline. And we see that time and time again when we do the work. Memory and, 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 memory and healthy brain function can often be improved if we solve the puzzle and we do the work of TLC. Some of you have been here before. Let's see if you can make me feel good as a teacher. What does TLC stand for? <laughs> Tender, loving care for your brain and body. Uh, yes, but it, beyond that, it's therapeutic lifestyle change. It's changing your lifestyle to fit your genetic needs. If we had to sum up this evening, memory problems happen when our lifestyle has not been meeting our unique genetic needs for some time. Not a year, typically not even 10 years, but decades. So, humor is healing. By the way, I did forget my notes, but the good news is I never had them in the first place. What about this one? The movie theater window, our senior discount for the six o'clock show. And could you fill my prescription, please? <laughs> so, there are many types of dementia. And sometimes we fixate on, well, what kind do I have? Alzheimer's is the most common. Vascular is really common. Mild cognitive impairment, have any, anybody heard of that? That's really early Alzheimer's. That's the best description. Parkinson's, did you know that par one dimension of Parkinson's is dementia? Mixed is really common where you have more than one at the same time. The person I highlighted in the last class had vascular, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's all at the same time. And by the way, uh, I just saw her last week. She's doing wonderfully. Uh, we're two years down the road now in solving her puzzle. There's Lewy body dementia, frontal temporal, uh, young onset, and there's, there's, some, there's other types that are more obscure. So imagine a weed. This is the part above ground. I have a weed in my yard. I take my smartphone and I take a picture of it. And I look it up online to find out the name for my weed, in Latin, of course. And then I'm really proud because I named my weed. We may name our weeds this or that. The reality is the name or type of dementia doesn't matter that much. What matters is what are the roots? What's causing it? What is the biggest root behind that entire list of dementia types? Let's, from our past class, see if you can help me. What's the biggest common cause of brain decline, neurodegeneration? Yes, thank you. The I word. Excessive, chronic, that means it's ongoing, inflammation. The brain on fire. How's that for a graphic? The brain on fire. Inflammation is the greatest enemy of our brain, and by the way, it's common to virtually every chronic disease. So let's list a few of those. What about Arthur? Remember arthritis? Mm -hmm. The itis is inflammation, gastritis, colitis. Vasculitis, you know, the list goes on, the itises. So this is what inflammation does. That's what a healthy brain should look like. That's what advanced Alzheimer's looks like. You notice how inflammation has burned away part of the brain, but more importantly, the inside. There's billions of neurons that are gone. That's too much damage, not enough repair. That's the brain on fire. We want to prevent that. Now, this is something, who's heard of white matter disease? This is really a big deal because most of us have some degree of this. Uh, there are white lesions on an MRI. They used to be called age spots. 60% of men over 45 and 60% of women over 55 have it. What that means is most people in this room have, have this going on. 
it's really small blood vessel brain disease. Like we can have damage to the blood vessels to our heart, this is the brain. And by the way, if it's happening to the heart, it's almost certainly happening to the brain. Um, hypertension, diabetes, how many types of diabetes are there? Three. three. Type three diabetes is diabetes of what organ? The brain. brain. It's also called metabolic syndrome, and I cover that more in the last class. Heart disease, obesity, what kind of obesity is especially harmful? Where's the belly fat? Where's the fat that kills? In the, around the belly, the midsection, called metabolic syndrome. That was class two. Uh, belly fat, Time Magazine's uh, cover story about 12 years ago was uh, that visceral adipose tissue, belly fat, is the fat that kills because it's an inflammation factory. That's why we want to make sure we we're improve that. Homocysteine, if you haven't had your homocysteine tested, get it tested. Uh, it's an inexpensive blood test. As it rises above seven, the brain shrinks. It's a major factor for brain degeneration and for this vascular disease. Uh, aging can be a factor as well. So these are some of the effects of white matter disease. A 200 to 300% increase in motor vehicle accidents especially cross-road crashes. That means you cross into the opposite lane and you hit somebody head on. 680% increase in falling. When our seniors, 50-year-olds, are falling, this is often a contributing factor. 830% increased death from pneumonia, this is a big deal. So, it's, um, white matter disease exact, exacts a heavy toll. It increases the risk of Alzheimer's and other types, but it really, it targets small blood vessels deep within the brain that affect the connections in the brain. So it's really in some ways the most harmful type regarding brain function. That is an excellent, uh, if you'd like to learn more, the Kremble Neuroscience Center in Canada, Dr. Mandel and his uh, research group, what they did is a video where they show a series of brain scans, they show this process forming. So has anybody heard of um, mini strokes? Not, uh, so these are really small ones that nobody's aware of, but they build up over time. And what causes this condition? Remember the I word? It's inflammation. But in this case, it's inflammation of the lining of the arteries. So inflammation increases clotting risk. And these micro strokes, if you would, that's what triggers white matter disease. Micro mini strokes below what we're aware of. <clears throat> so what about statins? We're told that high cholesterol is the enemy and that we should all be taking statins, even kids. Statins are so associated with three times the risk of coronary artery and aortic calcification. What do you think that's doing to the arteries to the brain? Um, there are far better ways than that. So, sometimes in America, it's I'm gonna have my breakfast at McDonald's, my lunch at Wendy's, and my dinner at Arby's, and I'm gonna just take a pill, right? How well does that work for the brain? So now what we know is Aricept and Namenda are shown to actually um, an aggressive decline in cognitive function. They accelerate the decline of our brain function. My mother was on uh, Aricept, number of years ago and what did, uh, she had explosive diarrhea problems as a result. Uh, as soon as I was able, uh, we saw to it that that was stopped. And by the way, her brain function improved when she was off it. Now some people will create temporary symptomatic improvement, but it makes the disease process itself worse. Should we be doing that to our seniors? So what does work? People say, well, I need to exercise, I need to eat well, uh, yes. But in reality, none of those are enough. Imagine a recipe, you're doing your favorite recipe and it has eight ingredients. How well does one ingredient work, or two? And people t ask me, well, what's the most important one? I would suggest it's the one or more that are missing. Mm -hmm. You need all the ingredients. So in our series of classes, our first series, we talked about the mitochondria. And I'm going to cover some slides on that. Then we talked about leaky gut and how important that is and the microbiome. 
de-stressing the brain, eating smart, supplementing smart. Tonight we're going to focus mostly on exercising, detoxifying, and peak brain performance. So what does our brain need to work well from our first class? Yes, oh boy, nice job. Energy, energy, energy. Where do we make energy? In these little factories called the mitochondria. When they work right, we generate lots of energy and very few harmful free radicals. By the way, that's what dementia looks like. What other diseases look like that? What about diabetes? What about fibromyalgia? What about chronic fatigue? What about colitis, irritable bowel disease? You know, the name goes on, list goes on. All those chronic diseases of aging. Do you get a sense of why they're, re they're related? Mm -hmm. Diabetes increases the risk of dementia because that underlying cause mechanism is very similar. So the mighty mitochondria, wow, imagine. In a microscopic brain cell, we have 100 billion of them, every cell can have up to 10,000 of those factories. The most energy intensive tissues in the body are your brain and your heart. And they're very high in that. The retina is uh, right up there as well. So our mitochondria talk to our microbiome, and we're going to talk more about what, th what that means. We can literally define a happy brain and happy body as happy mitochondria with a happy microbiome. And guess what determines how happy they are? Our, the L word, lifestyle. It's not just one piece, it's lifestyles, everything together. So our mighty mitochondria, really important. That's a uh, picture one. That's how laser energizes the mitochondria. So for many people who are having problems, we recommend photobiomodulation using photons of light to modulate the mitochondria. And there's even home care versions of that. So what does it do? It reverses every piece of that. That's what's going on, and I talk about that more in class two. That's what causes dementia. These are some of the, the factors. Tau protein misfold, beta amyloid plaque, glial activation, uh, accelerated cell destruction, and obviously inflammation's behind that. Photobiomodulation reverses all of that. It's a remarkable tool, it's not a drug. That's probably why we haven't heard more about it. So now the question is, how is our brain? How is my brain? How is your brain? So if we have these symptoms, that could be a sign of your brain starting to go downhill. Do not ignore this stuff, especially if it persists. What about these things over here? Brain fog, brain fatigue. This is the most one that concerns me the most. You can have all sorts of brain degeneration with no symptoms. The brain has backup systems, it compensates. So imagine, well, my teeth are fine. I don't brush them, I don't floss them, I don't go to the dentist, but they don't hurt. I'm fine. It's similar with brain issues. Do not wait for symptoms to take care of our brain. So the past pointing neuro test, and we're gonna review that. We're gonna actually do this a little bit later during the exercise part. And what it involves is you'll have a finger above your head and with your eyes closed, you go slowly like that, tip to tip, and you should touch. During a presentation, that's pretty good. So. <laughs> uh, other things, balance. Bad balance leads to bad brain function. The better your balance, the better your ability to think. Balance is a big deal. You should be able to stand on one leg like that, close your eyes and stay solid, uh, eyes for at least 10 seconds. And so many people can't do that even eyes open, and that's, that's a problem. This is another test we commonly do called a neurocognitive assessment. We can measure types of memory, processing speed, many things, and for $79, we get a wonderful picture of the brain. Anybody recognize that? That's from a brain scan where we can look at brain activity. This is what, um, gray is normal. This is the top-down view. This is from behind, left and right. And that's a side view, the eyes are up here. Normal is gray, the red is too much. That's high, excessive high frequency, and that's linked commonly with stress and inflammation, or internal stress in the brain. 
So we've talked before about the first and second brain. As how many have heard the term first and second brain? Okay, good. For those who haven't, the first brain has a hundred billion neurons, nerve cells. What about the second brain? It has 500 million neurons. Amazing. Every neurotransmitter, anybody heard of serotonin? 90 to 95% is made in the second brain. Every neurotransmitter made in the first brain is made in the second. Every gut hormone is made in the brain up here as well. Cholecystokinin and gastrin and secretin and all of that. So the gut's a brain, the brain's a gut. The takeaway, we must have a healthy gut for a healthy brain. So, part of the gut, you see that lining right there? That is ground zero for inflammation. It separates what goes in the toilet inside from our bloodstream. And you see that one cell thick? It should be a tight junction so it doesn't leak. That's leaky. What food group creates leaky gut in every person tested now? The research is overwhelming. Every time they eat it. Gluten. Gluten. Yes. Gluten creates leaky gut every time we eat it. Now, maybe we heal up again, but for some people we turn 30, 40, and now it doesn't happen anymore. By the way, with that problem, the extreme of gluten intolerance is called celiac. And for every one person with celiac that has gut problems, there's eight people that have only brain symptoms. That means celiac, that gluten sensitivity, doesn't show up as gut symptoms often. It's usually the brain that's affected. That's a big deal. So the gut lining is ground zero for chronic disease. Wow, look at the list. Chronic fatigue, obesity, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, psoriasis, autoimmune. Do any of those look familiar? We need to ask why. And if we keep digging why down the roots, we find the gut issue is a crit critical part. So, what controls the gut? The brain. They're, they're linked. So, in the automatic control centers of the brain, they're called autonomic control centers, via the yellow nerves, you see the yellow nerves? They're like the gas pedal in the car. They're to get up and go. There are stress, fight and flight stress response. And they're elegant to help us escape the tiger chasing us. The problem is they're designed to, to be activated for how long? Short, just minutes, maybe 20, 30, 40 minutes. What happens if they get activated and they stay that way for years or decades? Then we get in trouble. Then the list starts. Because the green nerves that turn on digestion, healing and repair, they turn almost off. So now anxiety, depression, irritable, balance, digestive allergies, sleep, brain fog, the list starts. The yellow nerves also turn on the I word. Remember inflammation? The yellow words crank up inflammation. They elevate blood sugar. They also elevate blood pressure. So often our blood pressure is because we're uh, living under the hormones of stress. So that response is designed when the tiger's hunting us. Blood pressure goes up, blood sugar elevates, all of that go goes up. So lifestyle for re reducing stress, there's many things. One of my favorites for people who tell me they can't meditate. By the, word, by the way, the word meditate has the same root word as the word medicate. And meditate means to become aware of. So a simple meditation, we, let's do this together. Take in a deep breath and feel the breath come in your nose. Feel your belly. Slowly let it out through your mouth. Feel it go out. Do that two more times. And out. Last time, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. You just did a three breath mini meditation. So when people tell me they can't meditate, we can. You don't have to go to a cave in the Himalayas or something in Tibet. So we talked about the microbiome. It's our largest organ by number of cells, about a hundred trillion more than every, the entire human body. And we're covered in, these, in, in microbes. Our skin, we're really a complex rainforest. And when it's balanced and healthy, it's critical to keep us well. Most of these are in the large intestine. 
microbiome by the numbers, only 1% of our genes in the human body are human, 99% of the microbiome. Antibiotics very much change the microbiome. And then when we regrow, we tend to have weeds. What else harms it? A lot of chemicals, processed food, but fiber deficiency. I would suggest one of our most important essential nutrients is fiber. Our ancestors ate between 100 and 150 grams a day. We eat about 15. So bumping our fiber is really important. People talk about juicing. And I joke, throw away the juice and eat the fiber. But in reality, do both. Just use a blender, not a juicer, so you retain the fiber. And then loss of food diversity. Hunter Gather Society, uh, I spent time with the Maku in the Amazon rainforest in the 90s. Uh, and they, they would do about a 60 mile loop uh, through the year, through the rainforest. And they ate different things in different parts of the rainforest at different times of the year. Uh, these groups eat typically about 600 different foods during the year. T average American about 15. We want to increase our diversity. Every time you go to the grocery store, get something new and different. But not in the, I'm not talking different kind of M&M. &M. I'm talking the fresh stuff around the outside of the grocery store. New and different veggies and things. And I don't know how to cook dandelion greens. By the way, that's a phenomenal prebiotic for the microbiome. Uh, I don't even know what they taste like. I just throw them in the Vitamix with a bunch of other things and I make smoothies. I throw in some berries for flavor. And so how do we boost it? You have a handout uh, and we have very specific, uh, a practical program to boost the microbiome. And people, a lot of Americans, they want to lose weight. I can tell you, improve your microbiome and you're going to become lean whether you want to or not. Uh, weight loss programs, and we don't use the diet word. Why? What are the first three letters of diet? <laughs> Instead, let's improve our microbiome and our weight will optimize on its own. So, those are two Cavachon puppies. Now we know one of the things that's great with stress is I keep uh, puppy pictures on my desktop on my computer and I pop to it whenever I want to unwind a little bit. It actually bypasses our conscious brain right into the subconscious. Um, it, actually Discover Magazine has a whole thing about the science of cute, how it affects brain areas. It's really healthy for us. If you've been watching too much news, look at puppies. So. Eating smart, feeding your brain what it really needs. So we've talked about Grain Brain by Dr. Perlmutter, a bestseller, New York Times bestseller. Uh, he's a medical neurologist. He's a medical consultant for the Dr. Oz Show. The surprising truth about wheat, carbs, and sugar, your brain silent killers. Sugar, we know, lights inflammation. While the grains convert right to sugar. Two slices of whole wheat bread have the same effect as six teaspoons of pure sugar. So this study out of the Journal of the American Medical Association, uh, it's out of, uh, the research is out of Sweden. It's a study size of 351,000 people. It's socialized medicine. Every, everybody gets, they, they do a scope and they do an en endoscopy. They do a sample uh, out of the intestinal lining. What they found is uh, celiac, with celiac patients, and because they have all their health records, they showed that people diagnosed with celiac disease, that means an extreme intolerance to what? Gluten. gluten. Yeah, wheat. Wheat gluten. They had a 39% chance of dying early. What about latent celiac means the biopsy was normal, but the blood test findings were positive. And that's one of the blood tests we, uh, we commonly recommend. They had a 35% chance of dying early. What about those that had active inflammation in the gut? Their gut was inflamed. Can we turn that AC uh, up so it doesn't come back on? Otherwise, I have some people that are going to freeze on us. <laughs> and I may be with you. Uh, uh, patients with inflammation, what about... The, they had a 72% chance of dying early. Wow. 
inflammation in the gut's a big deal. Because when your gut's inflamed, what else is inflamed? Brain. Your brain's inflamed. And the lining of your blood vessels and your joints. And so the principle of eating is the less your food has been doctored, the less you need a doctor. Eat the fresh stuff. Uh, one of the classes we teach at RISE, somebody asked me, okay, doc, there's all this stuff, I'm overwhelmed. If I can do one thing, what would it be? And that being real quick, it was the next class two weeks later, I had the answer. I said, eat only unprocessed food. Eat the fresh stuff. Another way to look at it is the food pyramid. What's the base of the pyramid? Vegetables. Where's fruit? Do we get that backwards sometimes? Yeah. Remember, a lot of fruit is sugar, and that feeds inflammation. So we like fruit, especially the berries, but in smaller amount, always eat more vegetables. And then when we talk about protein, we want people say red meat is bad. Well, yes and no. Corn fed from a feedlot with glyphosate, Roundup contamination, is really inflammatory producing. Grass fed. Uh, grass-fed beef is a health food. If you've heard of EPA, DHA, like fish oil, grass-fed is, beef is high in that because it's fed grass. Uh, if your seafood needs to be wild-caught, eggs need to be organic, and chicken, turkey, definitely you need organic. Avoid things from factory farms. Healthy oils, do, fats do not make us fat, sugar makes us fat. Healthy fats keep us lean. Nuts and seeds, what are some nuts and seeds? Help me out. Almonds, Almonds pistachios, cashews, 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 macadamias. What about chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds? Also really good, pumpkin, yes. Okay, um, oils in smaller amounts and then fruit. So top brain smart foods, we just did a list and again if you like a list of this stuff, just ask for our slides and we'll send them to you. Supplementing smart. These are the core five I, that we find. When we use the word TLC, therapeutic lifestyle change, most people need a foundation. If somebody's eating perfectly and they have no genetic weak spots and the digestion is awesome, they may not need supplements at all. I just don't run into those people. And so these are the, the ones we find most often. A high grade multiple. Not one a day. This is designed at four a day. And at four a day, it comes out to, what is it, 97 cents a day. Um, Omega Boost, fish oils, but make sure we can absorb them and they're potent and they're free of rancidity. We used to have vitamin D as one of the core. It's no longer vitamin D, it's K2D3. Uh, vitamin D should not be taken separately. Why? It raises serum calcium. What does calcium do? Calcifies arteries and joints and heart valves. Vitamin K2 prevents that. The only time that's a problem is if you're taking warfarin or Coumadin, uh, then we can only take small amounts of that. Brain Relax Max, magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. Critical for the brain. Almost everybody in America is, is depleted due to stress and things for inflammation if needed. And then glutathione, we'll talk more. So, uh, so you asked about if you've had an antibiotic, your microbiome, in, we need antibiotics sometimes to save a life. And if we do, we do it. But we have to rebuild the microbiome after. Or, for example, with celiac, when somebody's reacting to gluten and they stop gluten, that does not cure the condition. That's just the start. We have to rebuild the microbiome. And so the, the, meg, the megaspore biotic, these are spore-based probiotics that are like anything I've ever used before. The study at the University of Texas, they improved leaky gut in college students 60% in 30 days. That's drinking beer on weekends and eating pizza during the week. Um, it increases levels of vitamin K2 and some of the most effective antioxidants internally. Most probiotics, including the ones I've used in, in past years, they help us but only temporarily as they pass through. They don't take up residence and most are destroyed by stomach acid and bile acid in the small intestine. These are spore based, they're impervious to that. You can bake them at 425 degrees in the oven and they stay active. Shelf life five years unrefrigerated 
and they go through virtually intact. The, their new precision prebiotics feed the healthy strains. Uh, Acromancia mucinfilia, by the way, it took practice to say that. Uh, that is the strain that generates this protective blue lining. This is, we, when we turn, talk about leaky gut, this is the inside of the intestine where all the bacteria are. This is your bloodstream. Only aligning one cell thick separates them and there's a protective gel layer to protect that lining. This is what trouble looks like. That strain generates that blue layer. And then megamucosa is another thing we use to further help regenerate that. So uh, we're going to talk about exercise. So the first question in the beginning I asked, can we really prevent dementia? So in the Finnish study, they looked at over 1,200 seniors uh, over age 60, high risk of dementia. They looked at all sorts of cognitive function, like the testing we did. Every function they measured increased at least 30%. This was breathtaking in the community. It shook everything up. You know, they say, well, you can't prevent Alzheimer's, or you can't even improve it necessarily. This study showed that's not true. What did they do? They had people eating a Mediterranean kind of diet, which is very similar to what we mentioned. They were giving them vitamin D as needed. Social interaction brain games, they monitor blood sugar and hypertension. And they did exercise training with a physiotherapist 30 times or 30 minutes, five times a week. Then they worked up to 60 minutes, five times a week. Senior citizens. It was phenomenal, the change. Why would exercise help the brain? Yes, it improves oxygen. Yes, thank you. It reduces inflammation. It also, stress, as stress goes up, what happens is inflammation. It goes up. What does exercise do to cortisol, the stress hormone? It's the natural antidote. We're made to move. In fact, when stressed, what we recommend is move more, think less. You know how sometimes you're ruminating, you can't turn your brain off? Move more, think less. So of the types of exercise, the kind that is most commonly lacking is strength training. As we get older, do we have an increased need for muscle strength or less? Increased, but we tend to do less of that. So when I turned 40, by the way, that was not last year. Uh, <laughs> when I turned 40, I realized I was starting to lose strength. So I started working with a trainer to learn how to do it properly and it got me on track and I've never stopped. I don't have a trainer right now, but I've, on occasion I'll use one if I think I need one. So there's brain games, continuous learning. Wow, being here tonight, good for you. you you're here because you're open to learning. I appreciate that and I respect that. Continuous learning is great for the brain. Art, uh, we have on our, in our reception area, coloring books and pencils, adult coloring books. Why? It's really good for that part of the brain. Video games, shoot them up. Video games, not so much. TV, not so much. Um, card games, bridge, board games, balance, ping pong is great for the brain. Yoga is awesome. And then neural rehab exercises. So let's, take, let's do one of those together. So put your, um, uh, it'll be a mirror image. And so in this case, I want you to put your right hand above your Right hand above your brain. So I'll put my left so it looks, okay. Right hand above your head. Now with your eyes closed, bring the left one slow, slowly, tip to tip. Go to where you think it is and stop. Don't go fishing, that's cheating. Now take a look and see how far you are, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an exercise together. We're gonna do a brain exercise for the part of the brain that reduces your stress response and your inflammation. Does that sound important? By the way, you can do this one on your own safely. A great time to do it is before meals. So what we're going to do is we're gonna cut, we call it the piano. You're going to start by touching your thumb and little finger together. Now ring finger and thumb. Now work your way up. When you get to the index, double tap. And now work your way down. Now we're going to add a second task called double tasking. For some of us, it's too much. So that's okay, but we'll try. So I'm going to go, ah. When I do an ah, I'm raising the soft palate, firing cranial nerve 9 and 10. Ah, 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 
Ah, ah, ah, ah, ah, good. Ah, 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 ah. One more. Ah, 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 ah. Good. Now redo the test. Put this above your head. Close your eyes. Slowly go tip to tip and see how you do. <laughs> what do you notice? <laughs> For some of you, it'll be closer. That means your brain is responsive. For others, we haven't solved the puzzle. In other words, there's other pieces of the puzzle that you need help with before that will change. But that is one, that's an example of a brain exercise to support uh, brain balance. So, also exercising our physiology. Uh, this may be new for some of you. But too much comfort is harmful. Throughout human history, we have not been designed to be too comfortable. Right now, we have climate-controlled everything. Climate-controlled home, car, come to an office, everything is climate-controlled. Too much comfort makes us weak, fat, lazy, and sick. Uh, think of it as you're laying in the recliner, perfect comfort control, watching the big screen TV, and the, all your exercise is pushing that remote, and then the wrist. <laughs> and then reaching into the junk food bag beside you. So, stressing our physiology has all sorts of health promoting benefits. So, cold stimulates white fat uh, to create brown fat. It reduces the risk of obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is also known as type 3 diabetes, which is diabetes of the brain. I take it brown fat's better. Brown fat is rich in mitochondria and it generates heat. Uh, and so white fat has, is an inflammation factory. Brown fat is the opposite. It actually reduces. And so if you'd like to learn more, excellent book, The Way of the Iceman, Using Science and the Secrets of Breath Control, Cold Training, and Commitment. That is Wim Hof. He's my age. And he's been in the research. Uh, and this is also like Navy SEALs and, and monks. They can put them in an ice bath, a, you know, a big vat filled with ice and some water. They put them in there, and their body temperature goes up as they're in there. Uh, actually, he can stand in the snow. He's learned our body control systems. And if you rub snow, steam comes off. It can generate massive amounts of heat. Uh, the point of it is, for us, when you take a shower, and Dr. Oldenburg, when I did my internship 40 years ago, he said, when you take a shower, finish with a cool shower. You know, for aesthetics, they say that closes your pores, it's good for your skin, but we know it activates your autonomic nervous system in really good ways. Helps you from getting sick, and it promotes brown fat. And so, um, do, and then start with a cool shower, and then you gradually work at it. And there's ways to do types of breathing during it. I go into an unheated pool. And I'm working with the breathing, and I can go longer and longer, and you don't feel cold. It's amazing. Uh, when you get out, you actually feel warm. Uh, our bodies are remarkable. But that's, so detoxification. When we talk about detox, we talk about toxic chemicals, heavy metals, and toxic emotions. When we have toxic emotions, living under the hormone distress, the detoxification machine returns off. Remember the, that tiger picture? When we activate fight or flight, detox turns off. Why? You're not going to waste energy on detoxifying or digestion when you're running to save your life. So it's, that's an important one. What are some toxic emotions? How many of us struggle with these? Having connection, reason to live. So loneliness is lethal. And it promotes inflammation in the brain leading to Alzheimer's disease. It's a fertilizer for other diseases. It's a greater threat to health than obesity and its life shortening effects are comparable to 15 cigarettes a day. What that means is be connected, develop connections, reach outside of ourselves really important and we know people that are lonely uh, reaching out to a system is important pain is inevitable this is one of my favorite quotes pain is inevitable suffering is optional 
Suffering is caused by attempting to hold on to things. For me, trying to hold on the need to be right, the need to control things, the need for security. I'm going to make this work out if it kills me. You ever tried that? I about died. I tried to, <laughs> tried to make a relationship work when I shouldn't have. I need to have my way. I need more. Uh, there was uh, one interview with uh, Rockefeller, the original. Um, he said, how much money is enough? And he said, always one more dollar. Uh, the concept of letting go of the need for more. Or how many numbers do I have in my bank account? Um, it's letting go, the pathway of surrender. It's one of my favorite books in my personal library, David Hawkins, MD, PhD, was a psychiatrist that is no longer with us. These are wellness emotions, very powerful. Gratitude, for some people that have a uh, religious background and the New Testament is uh, be grateful in all things, that is a very powerful health-promoting uh, emotion, gratitude. Uh, having a purpose bigger than us. The concept of retirement can be dangerous unless we have a purpose bigger than us. So, when we talk about heavy metals and toxic chemicals, glutathione is the central player. Anybody heard of glutathione? Anybody know if they have enough? It's a blood test. It's a $15 blood test, GGT. It's the mother of all antioxidants. It's made on our cells, but under stress and many other reasons, we don't make enough of it. We can supplement with it. So, the power of cute. That's another cat. Anybody know that breed? In both pictures, that's a Cavachon. That's a cross between a Cavalier King Charles and a Bichon Frise. Let's stand up and let's practice a breath. There. So. Who's going to try the cool shower? You're brave. Good. Would you like to know the kind of breathing that will make it go better? Yes. Okay. You do 30 of these breaths first and then continue them during the shower. You turn it cool. So you breathe into your nose and then exhale. We're going to do 10 together. Anybody dizzy? If you are, stop. Otherwise, we'll find more. Two more? We're almost there. Last one. Now, and go ahead and grab a seat. This is also part of learning breath control. And if you follow that with the breath hold, 30 breaths and then deep breath in and hold as long as you can. As you practice that, you can get longer and longer. Wim Hof, remember the guy in the, the Iceman picture? Mm -hmm. He trains people. He claims he can train any of us to hold our breath for five minutes with practice. Uh, and at least three minutes fairly quickly. So the, have you heard of these uh, free divers that go down? Do you know what the record is for holding breath? 22 minutes. They go down more than 1,000 feet. Now I'm not recommending that. Plenty of them drown in the process. But um, so. Do you recognize that? Those are brain waves. So, have you ever wondered what's going on in the brain? <laughs> what if we could find out? And so, more importantly, did you know we can change our brain waves? So, we can learn to change our brain waves just like shifting gears on a bike. And I'm going to show you a picture of anxiety. Why are we concerned with anxiety? What does it do? It drives inflammation in the brain, which is under um, a root mechanism behind virtually all of our degeneration issues. Not the only one, but an important one. With brain training, we can learn to go from stress to peaceful quickly and easy. More importantly, we can write new software so calm, peaceful becomes our new norm instead of living under the hormones of stress. Some of us have lived under adrenaline so long, we think it's normal. A gentleman I had a consult with earlier went from one high stress career to the next, and now what he does, uh, 
in, in retirement is he races cars. <laughs> and it's like, and he made the comment, he said, yeah. And then I went to racing cars. So anyway, so this is a, an example of uh, a brain scan. You see where the nose is at the top? The ears, so a top-down view. Delta's slow wave, that's mid-range, that's fast wave. Now in the colors, you see that center, the gray is normal. Red is too much, blue is too little. Normal is in that mid-range. So beta looks pretty good there, doesn't it? We're going to look at a real patient in just a moment. Next, we're going to look at connections. It's easy. Normal is no lines. When you have lines, the red lines are like a traffic jam. Bell Road, rush hour, accident, or 101. Blue are like drop calls, kind of what happens. I unleashed it today on the cell phone. The calls kept dropping. This is an actual patient with dementia, anxiety, TBI. So what does she have? A lot of red in the slow wave. Too much slow wave is depression. Too much fast wave is anxiety. Can you have both together? Yes, they're two sides of the same coin. What about connections? One of the worst I've ever seen. Uh, this lady was 78, as I remember, and really unable to be home in her home any longer. She needed to go into memory care. And sad, information wasn't getting through. Remember, the parts of the brain have to connect. Information transfer, like a traffic jam, hear hearing every third word. So this, was, this is her again in the beginning. That's after we did neurofeedback, just 10 sessions. Did it change? What about connections? Before, that was after 10. We did 30, and they were virtually gone by then. And at age 80, two years later, she traveled to Europe solo. That really fought me out. That uh, brings tears to my eyes. We changed that person's life. So what did we do? We solved the puzzle. In other words, there isn't this magic, you do this, you take this newest supplement that's advertised, or do the stand in your head diet, or you know, the dunk yourself in ice water, you know, something. It's solving the puzzle. Uh, she had allergic reactive foods, a list of them, because her gut was in trouble. Her sleep was in trouble. We did neurofeedback. Uh, that's what neurofeedback is. We're listening to brain waves, and when they move towards balance, there's feedback. Uh, we use computer MIDI tones in a movie. Our subconscious brain quickly learns to bring our brain wave patterns back into balance. Ne Why haven't we heard about neurofeedback? <laughs> well, in our country, we have an obsession with drugs. By the way, I like drugs a lot. They get people out of crisis short term. But for long-term solutions, that's not always the way to go. No FDA-reported side effects in 40 years of university and clinical use. Is there anything quite like that? Um, it's effective with a right, wide range of issues. And it's used by, in our astronaut training program, PG, Pro Golf, West Point, Special Forces, Olympic Training Center. There's, and there's a long list. I just condensed that. So, in, in summary, we have to solve the puzzle. Why? Because any one thing isn't enough to turn around something. Dementia can be like a runaway train going down a mountain. You've got to slow it down and then hopefully begin turning it around. To do that, no one of these has enough power to do that. We need to solve the puzzle to put them all together. What we see when we do that, and we do the work of TLC, and what's that again? Therapeutic lifestyle change that fits their needs. We have ways of measuring and make sure it's working. We see way more often than not, not just people stop getting worse, not people just um, stabilize, but we see people beginning to improve. Sometimes dramatic, and it's really encouraging. The sooner we start, always the better.